I'm going to try to be a little bit more philosophical in terms of the Bitcoin, the, the grassroots, where cryptocurrency started and give a little bit of feedback, at least my personal interpretation, uh, developing this space for four or five years, I really, I really read a lot, um, the cyberfunks and where it started and, and who Satoshi was. Um, incidentally, so Syscoin represents really what the core of what Syscoin is, is extended utility, right? Extended utility, we're extending what Bitcoin does, we're extending what Ethereum does. There's something in the middle, it's called Syscoin. We don't know what that utility is, but let's dive into that a little bit. Incidentally, in order to get to that, um, I'm gonna ask a question, what makes you think, uh, how did Bitcoin start? Like, what lured people into Bitcoin? What do you think? Like, what do you think? Uh, what's the component of Bitcoin that drew people in? Is it the store of value? Uh, Is it the... People were sick, sick of the banks. Okay, Back sick sick of the banks, yeah. But what, what technical component of Bitcoin you think is responsible for saying, oh, you know, that's cool. I think I want to own some of that. Because... It's, it's, like the, it's your scenario in which it occurred after the 2008. The timing? Yeah. See, see I, I think it's Satoshi. It's the, the enigma of Satoshi that created this. I think what happened was, um, you know, Satoshi came as an anonymous person. He announced something. Uh, he created a decentralized army, right? An army of people. Everyone Satoshi owns Bitcoin. You can't take that away. There's no, there's no master to cut off the head of an army. To, in order to disintegrate an army, you cut off the master and the army's gone. So with, with a decentralized army, I can hold my beliefs true to myself and no one can take that away. And so, uh, th not only that, but basically the message itself is very clear that it's, it's going after the monetary mass, right? The, the problems in, in 2009 were fairly self-evident, so he went after that. So like you were saying, like at the right place at the right time, but the message was clear and it couldn't be taken away. So it grew and it grew and became powerful. And that's what gave him the first value of why someone would want to buy Bitcoin, because no one could take it away. And what it stood for was, was very powerful. So Satoshi actually um, took groups of work that was already done. So Hashcash, uh, Bitgold, uh, these, these were already kind of implementations, uh, thousands of years of math and game theory put together. But they all had their own little problems. They all had their, you know, they, 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 they hit a thud in terms of game theory and they couldn't complete their designs. And what Satoshi did was he took all of those and he put them together in what, what's called Bitcoin. So really A plus B plus C equals D. D is Bitcoin um, and, and Hashcash and Bitgold were all good in their own right, but components of those exist in Bitcoin today. And so that's what Satoshi did. He, he, he basically gave the, the answer to the puzzle and in and 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 compact design. Hal Finney, uh, Nick Zabo, uh, Adam Back were, were the early cyberpunks. Hal Finney embraced it and took over and, and, and helped. And what did Satoshi do? He, he backed off. He said, you know what, I'm done. It's, it's the community driven event now and, and you guys manage it. So that's what gave true to the decentralization of, of the protocol. So no one could take it away. There's no one to cut off, no one to make an example of. And, and, and that's the beauty and the, and the power of that. Incidentally, you have something like Ethereum, which is you know Vitalik up here. Um, Ethereum's army is about utopia, right? Smart cities, IoT, um, uh, world supercomputer. And Bitcoin's army is more about uh, anarchy, right? So that's why they kind of don't really get along. They have their own ideals and there's Vitalik there and Vitalik decides Etsy is, is better for him. What's going to happen to Ethereum, right? So there's risk there. Syscoin, um, the reason why there's no face to Syscoin is, is purposefully designed. We, we wanted that that way. We feel that we need to be a decentralized economy, a decentralized community. And we are all Satoshi in that way. We, we drive the protocol in a way where there's no front face. Everyone is equal and we all push towards a common goal so that's I mean that, that's the vision and when you follow the Bitcoin way of doing things that's uh, and when we follow that fairly strictly we believe we bring value in by interoperability so extended utility we take Bitcoin we add an asset protocol we add ZDAG we add payment channels you take Ethereum we add the bridge now there's a reason for you to use this chain it's not just oh you know speculative I'm gonna make a couple bucks but it's following a vision and following um, you know what Satoshi laid out the SPV proofs on the white paper the 
merge mining. He, he, he saw, foresaw multiple chains. He foresaw the fact that there needs to be uh, you know, instant, almost instant transactions. He, he came up with a, a snack machine example. He said, I need to be able to buy a snack from a machine with my Bitcoin. Of course, Bitcoin doesn't allow that to happen, but it was his vision, and that's what we, we did to fulfill that vision. We created an asset protocol, and, uh, and we merged mined, and we said we got ZDAG for fast transactions, and we fulfilled those components. And that's what we meant by extending the utility, extending the utility of the Bitcoin model, but also to Ethereum and say, hey, look, we got proof of work now. If you're on Tether, you want to come over to our chain and, and, and value the proof of work, it's, it's there for you. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not going to talk much longer. Basically, the, the target market for, for Bitcoin is money. Ours is, uh, is more uh, settlement of value. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, you, if you have a business, you can bring your business on board and we can build a token and this is what AGX and Load is doing and it's an example. But there's tons of more. Um, ERC-20s are having gas price fees uh, issues and everything's expensive and slow. You bring them over to Syscoin, we can help. Um, and so. Uh, Bitcoin is, is, has been around for a while. We've been around for a while. We're still learning. We're going to apply some concepts. Uh, the bridge is just something, is something new, but it's not the end. We're going to start looking at zero-knowledge proofs. Um, there's a Halo protocol recently announced for recursive zero-knowledge proofs. We can extend that to other chains in a way that doesn't require a lot of work. If we implement one zero knowledge proof algorithm, apply that to many chains, that's potentially one way. And then solving the scalability, we don't believe ZDAG is the, the be all end all. We think that payment channels could supplement ZDAG. So you, you take the concepts of, of off chain transactions and on chain transactions and merge them together. You have fast on chain, you have fast off chain. They'll complement each other, and we feel that that's what's bringing value, value to the world and a reason for someone to move to our chain. Thank you. Great.